morning, namaste, thank you so much for joining. This is a Dharma Yoga practice, it's about 90 minutes long. Please practice as always according to your conditions and abilities. Think of the practice as an offering. Imagine all creations experiencing this through you. So if you, um, in that way you want to practice in a mindful, conscious way so as not to bring yourself in a place of pain or suffering, because that is what you will transmit. So on that note, let's begin. Close the eyes, bring the attention inward. Nothing to do, nothing to seek. Everything you need is already within. Begin with the sound of all three times to attract divine attention. Imagine you're becoming one with all beings everywhere. everywhere be happy and free from suffering and enjoy this practice to our senses. May we always have a strong desire for the knowledge that liberates us from pain and suffering. And may we cherish no ill feelings against each other. May we have a peace, love, joy, and compassion. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. So let's do the mantra for purification to purify the space, the grounds, and all the psychic channels within. If you don't know it, just pretend you're singing it through the voice of the guru. You derive all the benefits as though you're chanting it perfectly. If you do know it, do it with conviction and volume so it can be heard by all the psychic channels within and all around us. There's countless numbers of them within, over 350,000, and of course all around because we are all 
merging with one, all, all beings everywhere. Do it three times, each time try to do it in a single breath. Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Toki Wa Yaha Smaripanti Kaksham Sabaya Gyantra Ha Shihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Toki Wa Yaha Smaripanti Kaksham Sabaya Gyantra Ha Shihi Om Pavitra Ha Pavitra Wa Sawa Vashtanga Toki Wa Yaha Smaripandri Kaksham Sabaya Bhyantra Ha Sajihi Spiritual breathing is establish a deeper connection with the divine essence within. Bring the arms up over the head, the palms turned up. On the inhale, imagine you're bringing the best of best. Feel it coming down through the arms into the spiritual heart. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Holding the spiritual heart in the center of the chest and the right side of the physical heart. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale up through the arms. Just the breath leaves. Everything that you pulled in stays within. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, inhale. Attract everything you need. Bring it down through the arms into the spiritual heart. Imagine there's a magnet at the spiritual heart. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, holding in the heart. Hold the breath. All the attention at the spiritual heart. Exhale up through the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale again. Down through the arms. Everything you need. The best, the best. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Holding in the heart. Hold it as an offering to God who resides there. And then the, this will go out to all beings everywhere. Exhale up the arms. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Bring the arms down now. Everything you do, remember, is meant to be shared with all beings. All the exercises. Eventually it goes beyond the mat as well. So now let's do some um, Kapalabhati. This is a Kriya. It helps to purge the impurities out of the lungs. It helps to aerate the lungs and oxygenate the blood. It also tones the abdomen. Stimulates the Muladhara Chakra. Okay, so actually it stimul stimulates the, the Navel Chakra, the Manipura Chakra. So we're going to imagine we're throwing the belly button against the front of the spine. Do it forcefully. Don't worry about the inhale. It's passive. It happens as a, as a result of the pressure built up by the exhale. So it, it's like that. It's about one exhale per, sec, exhale per second. Keep the shoulders down. Try not to bounce around too much. Keep the body nice and still and erect. At the end of it, we'll do a kumbhaka, a breath retention. For the breath retention, contract the buttocks. Contract the perineum muscles and imagine to then push the belly button right to the front of the spine. For the throat lock, as you inhale, you want to raise the chest very high so that when you bring your chin down on the chest, your back stays straight. Try not to hunch your back when you bring your chin down on your chest. The tongue to come up behind the teeth will seal off the lock completely. The attention is at the space in your eyebrows. Hands in Yana Mudra, second finger and thumb connected, the root of consciousness on the knees. Breathe out completely to start. And then begin when you're ready. completely. Now the breath retention, inhale. Fill up the lungs, raise the chest very high. 
Hold the breath now, chin on the chest, throat lock, root lock, third eye attention. Everything stops. All the attention with the space between the eyebrows. All the mind activity, the body movements, and the emotions as though they were frozen completely. Slowly exhale, under control. Try not to let the breath explode out of the body. Relax, release the locks. From the solar plexus, inhale up to the crown. Bring the power from the solar plexus up there. Leave it there, exhale back down to the solar plexus. Again, from the solar plexus up to the crown. Leave it there, exhale back down to the solar plexus. Keep drawing the power up from that source. Next, inhale again. Fill up as much as you can. Raise the chest and other round of breath retention. All the attention fixed at the space in the eyebrows. Now all the power you put up there, imagine you're sending it to all beings everywhere. It's going everywhere. Keep the throat and the root lock engaged. Slowly exhale, soften everything. Ujjayi breathing now, victorious breathing. This helps to increase the lung capacity, also helps to generate heat. So we're going to start off by breathing, just clutching the breath about two or three fingers below the belly button to the top of the chest. So you're clutching all the Imagine you expand that whole area node between those two points. Make an audible sound as you breathe. Inhale, inflate the belly, the lungs, the chest. Exhale, deflate. Inhale. Exhale. Partway through the next inhale, close the mouth. But we're still producing that sound, so it feels as though you're Breathing through a partially constricted throat. Inhale. Exhale. Feel the friction at the friction at the back of the throat. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Draw awareness to what's inside. Can you feel the heat building? Exhale. Inhale, remain, however, without expectation. Exhale, just be the witness watching the body moving and whatever's happening. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Expand as much as you can. Exhale. Teach yourself to pretend you're Mussolini. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. The last one. Inhale. Exhale. Now fill up again. Inhale as much as you can. Raise the chest and kumbhaka. Breath retention. Apply the throat and the root lock again. All the attention with the space in the eyebrows. Now as you're holding your breath, see if you can let in a little bit more air. Create a little bit more space. Keep holding the breath. Keep the mind calm no matter what the body's experiencing, even though the body is in a state of tension and discomfort, remain calm. Again, let in a little bit more air if you can. Keep on holding your breath. Perhaps one more time, create a little bit more space. Can you enter in any more air? Slowly exhale with control gradually. 
feel everything softening, release the locks of the throat to mind. On the solar plexus again, inhale up to the crown. Exhale back down to the solar plexus. Keep drawing power up from the solar plexus up to the crown on the inhale. Release out the crown, exhale back down to the solar plexus. One more time, inhale up, more of the power up to the crown. Hold the breath again momentarily, again, send out all the power to all beings. And release now. Take a moment to observe the state of the body, the mind, and the emotions. Continue to stay in this mindset throughout the practice of the witness. Be unjudging, be undisturbed, unaffected. It is the body, the mind, and the emotions experiencing everything, not you. You are beyond all that. The true nature of yourself is beyond that. And as we continue with the asanas now, try to see the divine in each and every being. The way that God manifests in this universe is through the form so we bear and love each and every one and see the beauty and magnificence of each and every one. So let's come to standing now. So we're going to start off with some exercises to prepare the body for the practice. Hands on the hips, start to circle the head to the left. Try to get the ears to the shoulders, the chin to the chest, the back of the head to the top of the back. You can move a little bit faster to heat up the joints. But remember to be mindful of your conditions and your uh, limitations. Practice accordingly. Modify accordingly. And then go in the opposite direction now. Feel this little head. We're very, very heavy, rolling all the way around the neck. And now from here, swing arms back and forth. Turn your body to each side as your arms come back and forth. And now we're going to continue, but start to circle the arms. So complete the full rotation. You want to have the arms spinning in opposite directions. And now again, back to the arm swings. And now we're going to again start the circles, but turn in the opposite direction as you're going forward. So if you front, the left arm is going forward, this time it's going backwards and vice versa. Okay, now bring the arms up over the head. Hands in Kali Mudra, the index fingers together, heels to the palms squeeze together, arms by the ears, bend to the left. Come back, go to the other side, push hips up towards the left. Go back to the left, try not to make folds in the waist. And go to the other side. Come back to the left one more time. Stretch, and then go to the other side. Come back to the center and release the arms. Next one's called Breath of Joy. So you have to do it with the enthusiasm to make it live up to its name. First two moments on the inhale, last one on the exhale. So it looks like this. Exhale, throw the body down against the thighs. Imagine you're throwing all the negativity out with the exhale as well. Just hang out there for a moment if that was shaking and bouncing. And then roll your way back up. Right, now shake up the wrist, move the fingers very, very rapidly. Get no control over the hands. They're moving all by themselves. And then up and down again, very, very rapidly, like the wings of a hummingbird. You can spin your hands in circles if you like, the wrists, and then the other way. Good. Now drop the arms and then just continue to shake the whole upward torso moving rapidly. 
head's going in all the directions, the hands left in the body. And then conclude here. Next one for the waist. Bend your knees. Make it like you're sitting on a horse. Take hold of your opposite elbows and then go from side to side. You can do Kapalabhati as you're doing this. So as you throw from one, go from one side to the other, you're exhaling as you go to the maximum turn. Throw your head all the way back. Look all the way behind you. Twist as far as you can. And then release. Next one. If you need a wall, you can bring your left hand on a wall. Swing the right leg back and forth. Flex your foot so that your toes don't get stubbed on the ground when the foot comes down. Knee to the shoulder. Lean forward. Throw the leg back. Try to touch your toes to the back of the head. Good. And the other side, left leg. This one that these are all signature warm-ups of Dharm Sri Dharma Mitra. Always says, keep moving where you end up in big trouble. Keep moving forward in every way, not only physically, but spiritually and mentally as well. And then release. Now feet by sides, uh, feet together, arms by sides of the body. As Dharmaji calls them, calisthenics or jumping jacks. And clap your hands over the head. Again, kapala bhati leg. And stop. Now from here, the arms by the sides of the body. Inhale, start to come up with the arms. Let the heels. Two, three, four. Six, exhale back down, two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, come up, push through to your toes as you rise up. Four, five, six, exhale down gracefully. Two, three, four, five, six. Try not to allow the heels to bump on the ground. Up, three, four, engage your core and the thigh muscles and the calf muscles. Exhale down. Two, three, four, five, six. One more time. Inhale, rise up. Three, four, five, six. Get as tall as you can. Reach way, way, way up. Exhale. Two, three, four, five, six. Bring the chin back down on the chest in a gesture of humbleness. Stay in this humble mindset in order to practice. Renounce all the fruits. Do the practice because it must be done for the benefit of all. And then come to the front of the mat. Do the serve through the practice. Hands to the heart. Let's try to imagine together physically moving to the school of fish. Sturdy and on the sky. Some kind of patience. Raise hands up on the head. Arch back as you see fit. Hold the body down. Bend your knees if you need to. Bring your hands flat on the ground, chest on your thighs. Right foot back, lower down the knee, drop down to the seat. Come into the high plank. Bring the knees down, the seat goes back behind the heels. Glide forward between your arms, especially those grounds that come forward. Pick up the chest, bring your head all the way back. And take the seat back. You can do it slowly at first as the body's getting used to moving. Come forward. Push your shoulders back, the chest forward, the head back. Try not to crunch your lower back. One more time. Take the seat back, come forward. Keep pushing the chest far away from the seat. We like to keep the lower back a little bit spacious. Back into downward facing dog. Lift the seat and allow the head to come down below the arms. And then the right foot steps forward to the hands. If that's a difficult transition, lower the left knee down and the foot doesn't make it all the way, you can use your right hand to push the foot forward. And then the left foot comes in to meet the right. Uttanasana. Come right up to standing. Raise your arms over the head. Arch back. Hands back to the heart. Engage your buttocks and upper back as you lean back to help find the stability. Pull the body down. Uttanasana. Left foot goes back. Then into the high plank. 
go down on your knees and let's take this back again. Come forward. Pull up the floor like you're trying to pull the body, the floor towards the body. Take the head back. Again, take the seats back. Come forward. Glide like a snake creeps through the grass. And then uncoil majestically. One more time. Take the seats back. Try to imitate the forms on all and on all levels, physically, mentally, and spiritually. Copy them. Copy the teacher in every given form that is your teacher. Back into Adamukha Savanasana, downward facing dog. Left foot steps towards the hands. Feet together, Uttanasana. Bow down and feel in humbleness. Then come right up to stand and raise your arms over the head, arch back. Return to Panamasana, always coming back to the source of the Vagna. Raise your arms up, inject every movement with devotion, reflect devotion and love in all the movements and throughout the practice. So right foot goes back. Bend into the high plank. Ashtanga Namaskar, the knees, chest, forehead down, keep the elbows close to the body. Come forward. If you can, push into the ground. So you're trying to push the floor away, lift your hips and knees away from the ground. Bend the toes under. Now pulse a little bit. Push your hips forward, turn your hands a little bit more. Your chest goes forward, the head goes back. Want to look like a dog howling at the moon. Back into Adho Savanasana. Lift the seats, allow the head to go down. Pulse here as well. Work the shoulders. Try to get your chest down towards the ground. If you're flexible, maybe the forehead will come right down. Maybe even the nose and the chin eventually. Look like a dog stretching his back. Then the right foot steps forward to the hands. Antaryasana. Feet together. Chest again on the sides. Use the body to push your legs back. Try to get your legs straighter without detaching the body from the legs. Come right up to stand and raise your hands over the head. And then return home. Pranamasana. Go up and back again. Every movement has a certain consciousness associated with every posture. Left foot back. Tap into it. Into the high plank. Knees, chest, forehead down. Try to see God again in all the forms. Come up into upward facing dog. Again, pulse a little bit. Try to lengthen the lower back. Try to make any folds in the lower back of the back of the neck. Imagine your dog howling at the moon. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana again. Curve the back. Think of a slide at the playground. You want to look to have some, uh, the top part of the curve very steep, the bottom part shallow. Embody the loyalty of the dog to its master. That's even more important. Take on their qualities. And then the left foot steps forward. In reality, all the qualities are within. You just have to turn them on. Uttanasana, feet together, bow down. Come right up to standing, raise your arms over the head. And then back to Pranamasana. Go up and back again. Reach up. Fold the body down, fold body down in half. Right foot back. Lower down the knee. Into the hot plank. Knees, chest, forehead down. Move through the poses gracefully. Transitions are seamless if you're doing the body dance of devotion. Upward facing dog. Adho Mukha Sivanasana, downward facing dog. Right foot now between the hands. Feet together, Uttanasana. Come back up, cross to Uttanasana, stand and salute. And then back, Pranamasana, hands to the heart. Go up and back. Fold the body down. Bury your mind deep in the heart. Watch the body move with even more power, grace and ease. Left foot back. Then into the plank, down you go. Right knee to the face and dog, modify if you need to. If you need to stay in cobra, that's perfect. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Left foot forward. If you're offering, if you're offering the postures, that's, and you're going to the uh, full extent of your potential, that is a perfect offering. Hands back to the heart. Go up and back, let's add on now. As you come down, bend your knees, belly on your side, join the hands behind your back and pull them all the way up over your shoulders. The right foot back, lower down the knee, copy asana, raise arms up, pull the arms all the way back, the sides behind the ears, arch the back, then come right back down into high plank. If you want to try another transition, you can bring the seats all the way back and see if you can come forward without dropping your legs and your knees to the ground. Push out into the spine into the body, push the lift your toes and the hands. 
back into Adho Mukha Sivanasana. Right leg up, step the foot between the hands. Copy asana again, drop your seat all the way forward towards front heel, reach out back. You bring your seat all the way down so you don't lose your balance. Come forward, belly on your thighs, so you head point it back. Join them together and then the feet together. Uttanasana, the head pointed towards the feet. Come right up to standing, reach out the back. Come back on. Go up and back again. Watch your body moving with grace and power and ease. See yourself in the practice of trying to attain. And then with constant practice and determination, you can see ethical rules. Anything is possible. Left foot back. Back knee down. Go into Kapyasana. Reach up and back away from the leg. Lean away from the leg. Come right back down into high plank. The choice of your entry into your upward facing dog. If you want to take your seat back, go ahead. If you just want to drop your knees, chest, and force the ground, all good. Back into Adho Savanasana. Left leg up. Step the foot between the hands. Kapiyasana. Radiate your light from within like the crescent moon. Reach back. Come forward again, belly on your thighs, your hands behind your back. Feet together, chest on your thighs, head down. Try to get your chest below the knees. Lengthen your back body. Then come right up to standing, reach up overhead, and then back home. Again, raise your arms up, stretch the full length of the body into Uttanasana, belly on your thighs, bring your seats up over heels if you can. If your legs are straight, press the whole body against the front of the legs. And then the right foot back, Kapiyasana, smooth entry, be like a shape shift moving through your forms. Come right back down into high plank. And under entry, chaturanga if you like. Come down in one line from the heels to the top of the head, hovering just above the ground, into upward facing dog. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Right leg up, and the foot between the hands. Back knee down, Kapiyasana. Take your seat to all the way forward, lean away from the legs, stretch, bring your hips over the top, stretch here. Come right forward again, belly on your thighs. Hands behind the back and pull them right up over your shoulders. Face to the shins if your legs are perfectly straight. Come right up to standing, reach up and back. And then back. Hands to the heart. Raise your arms up. Stretch the whole front of the body. Hold the body down in half. Bend your knees, head towards the feet. Hands over your shoulders, maybe in front of the head. Left foot back. Move to the poses like you're doing the body dance devotion. The hands come back down into the high plank, into your upward facing dog. Press into your hands, push into your toes, upward facing dog, then downward facing dog. Sink the heart, soften the line in the back. Left leg up, step the foot between the hands. Kapiyasana, raise your arms up, stretch. Pull the body down again. In half, then you bow to your thighs, your right foot comes in through the left first, and then hinge at the hips, the head comes right down towards the feet. Come right to standing, reach out to the head, arch back. And then come back home. Good. Now, the next variation has a little bit of a jump back. If you don't want to jump, you can walk back. So raise your arms up now, reach up, pull the body down. Hands on the ground, each side of the feet, hold your breath, press into your hands, and then jump or walk back, hovering just above the ground. Into upward facing dog or cobra as a modification. Back into Adho Mukha Savanasana. Hold your breath, jump your feet forward or walk your feet forward again to your hands. Come right up and back. Right into the next one, three more. Press into your hands, come into your low plank, into upward, and then downward. Jump your feet to the hands. Go up and back, and the next one. Pull the bike down, no stopping. Just go from one to the next. Keep on moving, softly. When you land in your low plank, try not to make it a big jarring motion. Nice and smooth. Upward facing dog. Land your feet quietly as possible. Reach arms up and back, and then come back home. Hands to the heart. Take a moment here, take pause from the heart to inhale, love your heart up to the crown. 
Hold the breath, the right to the left, hold to all beings everywhere. Legs are like that to the heart. And may the sun be divine in divine unconditional love for all beings. And release. So let's continue with some other postures now. Start off with some balance poses. So we're going to start off at the back of the mat, hands behind the back. Walk the left foot forward, bend your knee, come into balance and take the start. Pull the right leg up, extend through the top and the toes. The body in one line from the head to the toes. If it's if you're having trouble balancing, you can take the arms up to the side of an airplane or you can just bring your hands to the ground. You can do according to your abilities. Now if your hands are joined together, you can keep them joined together, open up the palms, bend your left knee so you can bend your, get, your belt, get your belly on your thigh. Pull your hands further up in line with your shoulders maybe. Bring your right leg up higher. Try to get your foot higher than your hip now, the head above the height of the knee. Curve your back by pushing your shoulders back, bring your chin forward. If you're doing it with your arms apart, it looks like a gliding eagle. And then from here, take the pose, push into your left foot and come back up. Do it on the other side now. Okay, you can take your hands to the side, palms down, or join your hands behind the back, sneak your hips palms together. Raise or uh, bring the right foot forward and raise the left leg up. Make like you're lying on the table. Straight line from the top of the head to the toes. You can stay here now or Move into the top of the tree. If your hands are together, open up the palms. Bend your right knee, bring your belly on your thigh. And then bring your hands up higher over your shoulders. Keep your left toes pointed, chest forward. Curve your back body if you can. And then break the pose. Maybe push into right foot and come back up. Charge the body now, turn the palms forward. Inhale, the best, the best. Bring it into the body, up the spine to the crown. Exhale, center everywhere throughout the body. Send it up to all beings everywhere. Good, next pose, ballet pose. Take your right foot from the inside, the thumb behind the heel, and your right leg goes at the same time as your left arm goes out. Try to have your toes and fingers on the same line. Maybe it's about the height of the shoulders. If you're more flexible, bring your foot up higher. Lean to your left a little bit so you can get your toes and fingers to still stay on the same line. Now look up if you can. Be magnificent and poised like a dancer. If you're having trouble um, straighten your leg, you can hold underneath the knee if you like. Or you can bring your left hand to the wall if you're having trouble balancing. Be, remain unjudging, unconcerned, no matter where you're at in the path of your practice. Do your best. Now from here, bring your foot forward, left hand to your hip, bend your knee again, take hold of the big toe, push up to the base of the toe, if you want, you can lean back if you feel comfortable. Pull the foot up higher, push to the base of the toes. If that's a little bit too much, you can take your knee and push your belly into your thigh, lean back. Now, if you want to keep going, extend your right leg forward, hands to the heart, lean back like you're trying to lie on your back. And lean to your arms out. Break the pause. Come back. Try it on the other side now. Press firmly into your right foot. Take your left foot up, hold it by the heel, thumb behind the heel. And again, take your leg out to the side. If you flex the foot, it's a little bit easier to keep the balance. Or you bring your left leg up higher, close to the shoulder if you have more flexibility. Good. Offer up the pose. Now from here, bend your knee, right hand on your hip, take hold, two piece fingers circle the big toe. Push the base of the big toe, base of the big toe out. Lean back. Keep your chest lifted. 
or you take your knee, if that's a little bit more what you want to do. Okay, so lean back if you feel comfortable again. And if you want, you can take your left leg out, hands to the heart, look beyond your toes. If you want, you can take your arms out. Break the pose. Charge the body. Inhale, imagine the best of us coming right into the body through the spine up to the crown again. Exhale, send the heavy legs out. Let's go into the back of the mat again. Left foot forward, Adho Chandrasana. Left fingertips stand on the ground. Try not to have your, uh, try to lift right your palm right up off the ground. Stay in the fingertips. You have more strength in your fingertips. Raise your right leg up, open up to the right. Keep your toes pointed, your chest fully open. Make sure your fingers are together at the right hand so as not to dissipate any energy. And if you can, you can bend your left knee, bring your right foot back close to your seat so you can take hold of your ankle and push the foot as far away from your seat as possible. So try if you can. Instead of staying here with your foot with your knee against your foot against the heel, push it away. Hold it up. Now if you want, you can look forward. See if you can take your left hand off the ground onto your heart. If you want, you can take hold of your left foot, bring your left hand to your foot, push it back away from your body. If you want to keep going, push into your left foot and come up. Stand in bow pose, or if you don't have the foot with both hands, just the dancer. Use your intellect to find the actions you need to do to come into the pose with ease, with power. And then break the pose. With constant practice, repetition, constant with uh, repetition, the body will find the tricks that it needs. It will find the tricks that Come into pose more efficiently. The right foot forward now. Right fingertips down. If you're having trouble opening your your uh, up to the side, you can put your right hand on the block if you need to as well. Start off with Alchandrasana. Left leg straight. Open up to the left. Take your fingers both um, and take your gaze along the line of the left fingers. Then from here, if you can, bend your right knee so you can anchor more weight into your right foot. Bring your left foot close to your seat so you can take the foot more easily. And then push it all the way out again. As you're doing this, you straighten out your left, your right leg. Open up to the left again. And then if you want to keep going, look forward. Make sure the right hip is in line with your heel. You can take your right hand to your heart. Or take the right hand to the foot, push it out again, away from you. And if you want to keep going, hold your breath and stand up straight. Push the foot away from you. Stand with one hand or both hands on the foot. Break the pose. The important thing is to keep trying. So every time you fall, keep coming up again. Keep rising up. Good, charge the body. Inhale, imagine lights of every color coming into the spine, up the spine to the crown. Exhale, radiate everywhere throughout your body and allow it to radiate outwards as well. So let's, let's try one more. Okay, so we're going to start off with hummingbird. Bend your knees, get started your fingertips on the ground, index fingers on either side of the, um, in front of the feet. Raise the right leg up, bend the knee so the knee is close to your, um, is up high, the heel is close to your feet. Hummingbird is very small, so just try to make the shape that makes your body very compact. At some point, if you want, you can raise your fingertips up off the ground and bring the leg, uh, the arms all the way up. Close your toes. Now. Extend the right leg, 
coming in to glide with eagle for a moment. Lift your chest. And now take hands to the ground. Bring the right leg up high if you can. If your hand to the right tight, you can bend your knee again. Bring your left hand to your foot. The index is on the outside of the heel. Bend your right knee so you can get your belly on your thigh. And bit by bit, you walk your right hand closer and closer. At some point, maybe you can bring your right hand on the foot. Index finger on, either, on, on the inside of the heel. The gaze is just beyond your toes. Push the forearms against your calf. Now, bring the right the hands down either side of the foot. Push the right left heel up. So practice. Bring your weight forward more. So your shoulders are over the fingertips. Here, you can keep your leg bent again, and then see if you can, if you want, push up off the toes, take a few hops. Maybe you can come to handstands. If you keep your legs split, it's a little bit easier to keep your balance. Flex your feet, one foot in front, one foot in back. Go hold as long as you can if you're up. Concentrate. Gaze is down to your hands. Good. All right, and then come back down. And then roll your way up. The head stays heavy as you come up. And then let's charge the body for a moment. Mm -hmm. Take on the inhale. Everything you need is the spine up to the crown or past the bust. Exhale, send it everywhere throughout your body. Send it out to all the aches. One more time. On the other side now, starting off with hummingbird. Bend your knees, your belly on your thighs, your index finger to either side of the mat. Left foot slides back, and the left knee comes up. The foot towards the seat, and if you can, keep your gaze fixed on the ground in front of you. Your fingers, your hands come away from your floor, right against your shoulders, or over your head. Keep planting down on the ground. Then begin to glide with eagle, extend your left leg, straighten it out. Fly like that magnificent eagle soaring from a great height. You become what you see in your imagination, you become what you believe is possible. It's cultivated a boundless imagination. And now bring the hands back down to the ground. So you can get your left leg to come up higher over your, in line with your right foot. Eventually, the right hand on either side, your right hand on the right side of the foot, index finger on the other side of the heel, and then walk your left hand in closer and closer until you can get your hands on the foot as well. Index fingers on either side of the heel, your gaze just beyond your toes. Again, if it's too much, you bend your left knee. Concentrate on steadiness, find balance. And then bring your hands down on either side of the right foot. Again, push up off the toes. Try to lift your heel up. You can stay the whole time. You don't even have to bring your foot away from the ground. But if you want, you want to try to come up. You push into the ground as you're pushing the floor away. Bend your left knee. Flex your foot. And see if you take a few hops. Hold your breath as you're coming up. Once you're up, your breath will start to breathe again, hopefully. Good. This helps us. Or strengthen your arms and the wrists and get the bones thick and strong. So keep trying. Up. And back down. So from here, hang out for a moment. Take your hands underneath your heels. Step on your fingers. Push your your um, your calves against your forearms. Bring your body right against your legs. Chest on your thighs. Try to get your knees, uh, your chest lower than the knees. Your armpits right on the knees. Push your seats up. Depending on flexibility, maybe the legs will go completely straight. But no matter if they don't, do your best. And then come up, head heavy as you roll your way up. Charge the body, 
Inhale, everything you need, right up through the spine to the crown. Nice, I'll send it everywhere. Keep going back to the charging breath. It rejuvenates, recharge, recharge yourself. Now stand in the middle of the mat, facing out the long edge of the mat. Get away from our postures now. Fingertips together, in line with the elbows at the height of the shoulders. Jump or walk your feet apart. And then go to your left. Bend your left knee. If you're more flexible, increase your stance. Try to get your knee over your toes. Your arms are straight from hand to hand at the height of the shoulders. Make sure your right arm is not dropping down. Keep it nice and straight in line with your left arm. Now from here, Vila Bhagavatana 1, turn towards the front, if you want to come up, try to bring a right hip forward in line with your hip, left hip. If you can't do it too easily, then lift the back heel, turn on the left, right foot. This is an expression of devotion. So you say, you take me, I'm grab me higher devotion. Now lower the back knee down. Kali Mudra with your hand, rock your shoulders back and forth. And then again, lean away from the leg. Arch your back. Try to get your arms behind your, or beside you, behind your ears. So I do down the facing dogs. If you know other expressions of the pose, you can. If you're flexible, you can bring your arms back. Bring your right foot up. Try to find the foot with your hands. Maybe you get your head to the foot. Just by bringing your head back. So it's not quite there. You can use a strap or you can turn to the right, bring your right hand towards the foot. A nice one in between is swan or spear. Take your foot up. Press against the inside of the right arm. This is spear pose, the arm straight. Or bend your arm. Your fingers come close to your ear, lean towards your foot. Hook your fingers together. And then turn your wrist away, lift your left arm up, and bring it to the other side of your head, your left side. Push your foot away from your body, your shoulder. Break the pose now. Bring your right foot back down. Turn forward, left foot moves out to the edge of the mat. Your right knee comes up and push back and forth. Try to get your hips to sink. Lizard. Push back one more time with the right foot, lower the knee down, flatten up the toes, and see if you can roll to the right, fall on your right forearm. If your hips are low enough, this can probably um, uh, work. If your hips are too high, just stay on your hands and just keep pushing your hips down towards the ground like you're doing a cobra. Okay, so try to get both sides of your hips equally close to the ground. Try not to allow the knee to fall away from the shoulder like this, nor like this. Try to keep your shin vertical. Your knee stays close to the shoulder. Eventually, your body comes down lower than a knee. So if you're very flexible, your hips are already down. So you can get your belly and your chest to reach in and come down. So as you know, variations, go ahead. You can slip your left arm over your foot. From the outside, it goes underneath your knee. Throw it underneath your leg. And then your hand goes over your back and you join your hands together. Go over your back. Now, wherever you are, fix your gaze like a lizard that doesn't blink. Learn to perform. Imagine you're just basking in the sun like a lizard. Become one with the, what you're representing. Break the pose. Come back, put your hands. Push your seat back in line with the back knee. Lift the toes, out of the box, and hug your leg. You can bring your hands, uh, hold your you hold your your um, either side of the calf, or bring your hands down. So you can get your chest beyond your knee. The weight of the body on the leg might help you release the hamstrings anymore, a, a, a little bit more. If this is easy for you, you can do the full pose, Hanumanasana. Push your seat forward, 
slide your left foot forward. If it's on a slippery surface, surface, it might help you a little bit. But make sure you don't go too fast or too hard when you're pulsing. If you're not all the way down, be mindful. Don't go to be. Uh, don't go to the place of pain or or um, or um, suffering or anxiety. If you're all the way down, you can take your hands to the heart and body the spirit of Hanuman. Ever devoted, courageous, and faithful. Anything is possible. Take on the over the head if you like. Cross your wrist. Arch the back. Lean back. Fingertips, slide your left foot back. Come more upright. Your shoulders, hips, and knees in the same line. The legs should look like a box. Paddy your feet to Pasha Kanasana. If you can lift your left foot up, the foot's in the right place. Okay, so now to do the pose, angle the toe knee towards the right, angle the toe knee in the same line. Push it out of the way with your left hand so you can get more space for the right arm to come down on the other side. Arm could eventually sit on the outside of the knee. Your left hand pushes into your right, and you keep pushing down until, at the same time as your hands are pushing down, your belly is coming up higher than the thigh, and so that the chest eventually meets your thumbs. Take the left shoulder all the way back, turn your face and chest up. Keep pushing your left hip back, top of that foot. If this is too much, you can come upright. Just take your hand on the outside, right hand on the outside of the left knee, your left hand on your seat. Turn to your left. If you want to go further, go take the bind. Push your seat back. Use the left hand to guide the right hand underneath your leg at a diagonal line so that the arm comes along, the arm comes alongside the front of the belly. Left arm goes over your back, join the hands together. And if you can, take your hip off the ground. Push through the base of the toes. You can do this with or without the bind. Break the pose, coming back to the center, and come right back up. Go to the other side now. Turn to the right, bend your knee. These are all warm ups. They help the body to um, to work the joints so they're ready for the poses that you hold a little bit longer. Every time you get a chance, enter into your meditation, which is the form. Become one with God who's residing in all the forms. Feet of the glass in one. Turn your body forward. Look up between the hands. Straight line from the feet to the base of the sky right at the fingertips. Express your devotion to him. Holy grace to serve. Holy grace to protect. Now lower the back knee down, drop your seat all the way forward towards my heel. Copy us, walk your shoulders back, reach back, lift the chest. Keep stretching and pulling. Don't make any effort. 10, 20 years, you're still going to be in the same place. And if you have other expressions to pose, go ahead and bring your hands down. Those are your flexible, your seat has to be close to your, um, your foot so that you don't lose your balance when you take your head, your foot to your head. That's not quite there. Turn to your left. So you can take your left foot up and just push against the inside of the left arm. So it's just um, always little progressions. Or take your spine. Get your foot close to your, into your crook of your arm. If you bring your fingers close to your ears, you might be able to bring your right hand to meet it more easily and push your foot away. Open up to the hearts. Open up the palms. Take the pose now. Lizard. Turn forward. Walk the right foot more to the edge of the mat. The pair of body just pulsing back and forth, pushing up the base of the toes. Push one more time to the back foot, lower the knee, and then see if you can fall. If your hips are low enough, onto your left arm. Then go back to the right. 
So both sides are of the hips are anchored down equally. And keep tuck of your body forward. The more you lengthen, the more the body will come down. So make sure your knee, your heel is not up and your knee is not waving on your toes like this. Okay, so you, if this is happening, slide your left foot back until your knee is and your, your shin is straight and vertical. Come down. Again, take other expressions of the toes if you know them. The important thing is, again, to be able to meditate in the pose eventually because it's possible to meditate in each and every one of them. You can see yourself in the form. And you imagine that you're as easy in that body as you are in your own. That's when you will find the ease and the quietness will come. back onto the hands, push your hips back, lift your toes up, out of the hand on that side, your hip is over the left knee, your hips are over the left knee, in the same line, and see if you can bow, try to touch the top of the head to the front of the foot, if you're feeling very tight in your hamstrings, bring your attention there, that's where the prana will go. And extend with your intention of release. Your attention is like a strong magnet. It pulls all the vital force there, all the prana. If this is easy for you, hanamanasana. Bring your seat forward, bend your toes under on the left foot, and start to slide the right foot forward. Then come back up right here, your shoulders, and line up your hips. Bounce a little bit. In and my ankle way is always. And if you're all the way down, you can flatten out your toes on the left foot. Bring your arms up, arch back. Imagine you're doing that great leap, like Hanuman did. It's as much of a leap of faith as it is a leap of a, 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 a physical leap. Anything is possible. And in our path towards self-realization, we'll get to experience everything. So even not in, if not in this lifetime, the next one, but as far as you can in this life go. So each time the journey becomes shorter and shorter. Lift the pose. Lean forward, push into your fingertips. Drag the right foot back. Come up right again. Padi the Take that little test. See if you can raise the right foot up. And then go into the pose, left arm up, and the modification is just stay upright, your left hand on the outside of the right knee, right hand on your seat, and turn to the right as much as you can, chest facing the right. Or dive down with your left arm, arms on the outside of the knee, and bring your hands together in front of your heart. So if your hands are at the shoulders, keep pushing down and raise the body up as many times so that. Your hands are in front, more in front of the heart as opposed to the shoulder, the right shoulder. Bring the right shoulder all the way back, turn your face up and your chest. And if you want, make the body as flexible. Lean back so your hips go back, make more straight because the right arm, left arm goes down under. Right arm goes over your back. And if you can, push your knee up off the ground, push your face to the front. Again, Dharma is always encouraging us to use our, our intuition, our intelligence. See what moves you have to do. If you feel blockage, you have to make create space somewhere. If you want to find a balance, you make your body more compact to start so that it's easier to balance. You have less limbs flying around, so you bring that balance. Break the pose, come back to plank. So from here, I'm going to go to Avati Stasana. Just move your left hand over to the right a little bit from the nose, your left hand a little bit from the shoulder. Just remind you to keep pushing into your hand and keep your left arm fully extended. If you feel you drop into your shoulder, you don't have the, uh, the quick the strength, your hips are starting to drop, lower your left knee down. Protect your joints. Go back to the plank, go to the other side now. Stand in the right hand, 
sit on your feet, push your hips up. Straight line from hand to hand through the body, from the feet to the head as well. And come back to plank, lower the knees down, sit in thunderbolt for a moment. Inhale, charge the body, bring the back back again, into the spine, up the spine to the ground. Exhale, send it everywhere. Good, so now you can either keep sitting on your feet and walk your hands back further and further. If you have more flexibility, super relaxed and separate your feet, sit between your heels and then come down. So you might be able to come onto your forearms Tilt your hips forward, lift your seats a little bit, and tilt them forward. If you can, go all the way down on your back. Just soften the knees. Try to bring your thighs together if you're right down on the ground. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, feel the whole body sinking down. The belly button falls right to the bottom towards the ground. Everything feels heavy. Come back up. If you're on your back, press your hands into the feet, tuck your chin in, lift your shoulders up, and come back. So now one more round of Fasti Sasana. If you know variation, this time go ahead. If you're doing it from your knee, your left knee to go to your left first, or it's going to go going to your right first. So stand with your left hand. You can see you can take the right leg up and take hold of the foot. If you're doing the full pose, you can. Turn on your left foot, slide your right toes back. Bring your left foot in a little bit and push your hip all the way up again. Push your shoulder um, up as well, away from the hands. And then see if you can take the right foot up off the ground. Yeah, at the inside edge of the left foot down so you can find balance. If you can hit your foot up, you can take hold of the knee. Bring close to your chest, your belly. If you can keep going, take hold of the foot. If you have the flexibility, go ahead. Turn all the way through into Urva Dandavasana. Spin on your left hand, swing your left foot. Find your feet and hands beside one another. Also another beautiful transition. Now, if you turn the same way, if you're Urva Dandavasana or one of those advanced variations, turn on your hand, left hand back to plank. Go to the other side now, on the right hand. Turn to your left. Good. Here, if you want, you can slide your left toes back alongside the right knee. Bring the right foot in a little bit. Make again sure that the foot is not too turned. The toes are the same line as the rest of the leg. Inside edge, the foot is down. See if you can take your left foot up off the ground. If your hips are high, then you'll be able to take the weight up off the foot easily and bring it up. Take hold the knee. Go take hold the foot so you have the reach. This is where definitely the idea of the physics combines. The more the higher your hips are, the more arch you have, the more steady you'll be. And the arch is a very stable, um, stable structure. So from here, come down on your knees. Child's pose for a moment. Breathe in. Breathe out all of this. Good. Now inversions. If you have a headstand, go ahead into it. You don't have to wait. If you need some guidance as to how to get there, there's a few options. First of all, if you're not comfortable with your feet reaching the ground, you can just bring your forehead in front of your knees and just lift your seat. Try to get your seat over your knees. If you feel too much pressure on the back of the neck, just bring your head forward a little bit. Or other option is you can take hold of your opposite elbows your elbows into your shoulders, move your hands forward and distribute the weight through the forearms and bring your head on the ground or even just not even on the ground at all and lift your seat. This is another version you just lift your heels up and down. Now from here, you can see you can raise one leg up once you get comfortable. The foot is hanging close to your seat. Again, make the body, keep the body compact. Flex your foot so you can get your right, the foot that's in front up off the ground Push into form, hold the breath, and see if you can pull your toes away from the ground. 
If you keep pushing through the foot that's behind you, eventually your feet will come to the same height. You can also do this on a chair. Your foot would be on the seat of the chair or on a wall. Your foot would be on the, the height of hip if you're on a wall. Another option is teddy bear. In front child's pose, bring your hands on either side of the knees, lift your feet. Your hands should be in front where you can see them on the right angles. Make sure your arms do not bent. Your wrists and your elbows in the same line. Walk your feet towards your wrists. Just push out just something to the knees against your elbows and see if you can lift your toes up off the ground, even if you just dance from one toes to the other. Just as many steps as you need to and take as long as you need to with these preparatory poses. And when the mind feels more comfortable and ease, then that is the first start to go any further. No forcing the mind it's a state that is full of anxiety that's not going to bring you quite this impulse. Good. If you have a lotus, you can do a lotus as well. Bring your attention to the space between the eyebrows. Find stillness. So one more minute. See if you can hold it a little bit longer. Chair. Your foot on the chair. The same way as you did before. Keep the legs bent. Foot close to your seat. And pull your toes eventually away from the foot to the seat of the chair or the wall of your chair if it's on. Good. Nose on your head stand easily. If you want. Push into your forearms, hold the breath, lift your head up off the ground. You should feel comfortably so. Bring your head back down, start your exit with control. You can come down one foot at a time or hinge at the hips and come down into a tuck. Come back down. Smoothly, no jerky movements. Try to keep the mind in a state that's not distracted or agitated. In child's pose, breathe in, breathe out. Now, come back up. And here, slide forward on your belly into cobra. Back into Adamukha Sivanasana. And then jump or walk your feet to the head. Come to the front of the mat. Shoulders over the hips. Fingers, uh, the fingers dangling, the wrists loose. You lift your heels if you can, as high as you can. Make sure you're sitting on the chair, your back against the wall. Legs might start to shake, be unconcerned. Train your mind to be fully calm. You are not the body, but the mind and emotions. Down slowly. And once your seat is close to heels, tuck your chin in, lower your seat down to the back of the heels, go back into plow pose or baby plow. Baby plow, your seat is a little bit behind your shoulders, your knees are close to your shoulders, maybe your feet are not on the ground, that's okay. If you start to push your back a little bit uh, more into your back, your seat will come over your shoulders and maybe the feet will come closer or on the ground. Now you can stay here if this is where you're at. If this is too uncomfortable still, you can do bridge pose. You can just roll back down your seat, your uh, heels just from your seat and lift your chest as high as you can so the chest looks like a wall. Those of you who feel comfortable, go into shoulder stance. Shift to one side to the other. Try to get your arms all the way back behind your body so you can't see them from the front. Your elbows come close together when your wrists, your hands, your wrists are together. Then don't move your elbows. Bring your hands back onto your back. Come up one leg at a time. Straight line from toes to the chin. If you have a lotus, do it now. Good. 
if your low falls low, try to push your knees harder than the hips. So it doesn't look like a paddle. It's more like a shoulder scan. Your knees are bent in the same line as your shoulders. If you're wearing a touch of shoulder, you can take your hands to your thighs. Push your knees up higher. Wherever you are, bring your attention to the space between your eyebrows. Come into stillness. Nothing to do. Nowhere to go but be built in. From here, you can either go into cloud pose if your legs are straight and the lotus, bring the lotus against your body, and you can. Take the full pose if you like by taking a bind. Wrap your arms around the outside of the legs, join your hands underneath your seat. If you don't have the lotus, come back to plow pose. Option as well to drop your thighs against your body, your knees on your forehead. Withdraw from your senses. All the inputs coming in through the eyes and ears, shut them out by squeezing your knees against your shoulders. Against your knees, against your ears, and closing your eyes. The more ability you have to withdraw from the senses, the better you can concentrate. Your hands behind your back, palms down. As your legs are coming down, do it slowly. Thighs stay with your body as long as possible. As you're coming down as well, your thumbs come close together, your index fingers touch as well, perhaps. Eventually, your seat lands on your wrists. Keep bringing them down, but stop halfway down so your legs are 45 degrees. And then lift your back up off the ground. Push your elbows in closer behind your heart. Lift your chest. If you can, take the top of the head to the ground. Or just bring your head back. If it's too much, keep your legs up, bring them all the way down. Arch the legs and the knees. Now breathe very fast and nose like a sleeping dog. Keep your head where it is. Urdhva Dhanurasana is next, or bridge. If you can't do, uh, if you don't have an Urdhva Dhanurasana practice, just do bridge. Otherwise, your feet are close to your seat. Turn your hands, uh, bring your hands behind your head. Stay on your fingertips, fingertips are, far, fingertips are facing away. Lift your seat up off the ground. Move your head in a little bit closer. Keep staying on the top of the head though. Turn your hands around, fingers are now facing towards the feet. Turn outwards as well. You can stay here or push into the ground and lift your head up off the ground. And good determination. Now stretch once you're up there. From the hands all the way to the feet. Rock back and forth if you like. Lift your heels. Bring your chest in front of your arms. This is a beautiful pose for building strength. So here, if you like, you have variations. You can go ahead if you want. You can lift your left leg up and come on just the index finger of the right hand. And she, you can see if you take your finger right up off the ground. And she might be able to take it onto your thigh. More advanced practitioners, of course. And then bring your leg down, your right hand down. Lift your right leg up. This, these are all options. You can just hold your order down and ask me your bridge if, if you like. Come onto your left index finger, just on the very tip. Just push into the right hands. And then see if you can take your left hand up off the ground. Practice takes concentration. And break the pose. Come back down. On your back. Mm, rest for a moment. Take a deep breath in. Charge the body. Imagine the best of us coming in through the skin like beams of light. Exhale, flood the body with that light and energy. Relax everything. Now, from here, 
If you need to slide your left foot in a little bit, keep the left foot flat on the ground. Bring the right leg up, ankle grasp. Take hold of the right ankle and start to knee bend, your knee on your shoulder. And see if you can pull the foot towards the body to straighten out your right leg. If you can, you can extend your left leg now, straight forward, back the left leg on the ground. If you're very flexible, you can see if you get your foot down on the ground on the, beside your body, your knee will come and see armpits. Now move your leg to the outside, half happy baby pose. Your knee underneath your arm, your shin is vertical, heel in line with the back of the knee. And if you want to bring your leg across the chest, like you're doing an upside down pigeon, you can take your foot in your left hand or bring the foot right in close to the arm. Your right elbow very close to the knee, just like with the knee. See if you get your leg right across your chest, your shin. Now you can stay here or more flexible, take your foot back. Bring the right shoulder in front of the knee, the right knee, and push the knee up so your right thigh and hip comes up a little bit. Bring your left knee in right into your body like a tuck. Lift your shoulders up off the ground. Those of you who have the ability, take your foot behind your head. Push your foot back behind you, pull towards the left. Bring your shoulders up, the head forward so that you can get your foot forward more easily on your head. Okay, and then your left leg extended or very flexible, take both across your legs, across your ankles, bring your head in front again, and bring both feet behind your head. Yoga Nidrasana. If you know how to get into this pose, go ahead. Lead from the heart up to the crown, back down to the heart. Send love out with each time that you breathe up. Imagine breathe up towards the crown and send out all beings. Now, if you do one leg, do the other one. Actually, both. If you're in if you're yoga nidrasana, yoga, yoga if you want to do the other side, then release. Bring your left leg up now. Hold the ankle, bring the left knee to the shoulder, left shoulder, and pull on the leg. Try to get your leg to stretch. Slide the right foot in if you need to, if your hamstrings are tight. And okay, I think you can straighten up your right leg again, more flexible. You can take your foot to the ground beside your body, beside the, just a little bit uh, behind your head. Then come into half happy baby pose. Bend your leg again. Your shin is vertical. And you can stay here or bring the leg across the chest. Take the foot in the right hand or in the crook of the right arm. Join your hands in front of your shin and just rest your shin on your chest. Close to the collarbone. The more flexible, the heel is on the same line as the knee. Going, bring the foot back and half happy baby, but this time your left shoulder comes in front of your leg. So your back to the left arm is underneath the knee. Bring the right knee in closer to your body as well, like you're doing a tuck. And if you want to try to stick with your head behind your your um, your your leg behind your head, lift the left side, left shoulder up a little bit more, push the foot behind your head. Lift your shoulders up off the mat, bring your head forward, and pull the foot towards the right, and maybe the foot will go behind your head more easily. You have to wiggle a little bit. Push into the back knee so the knee comes about the height of the knee, then um, the leg will be in a position where it can bend and go behind your head more easily. If you want, you do yoga nidrasana again, cross your ankles, and bring them behind your head, push them back. No forcing, no going to a place of pain again or suffering. This is, remember what you're offering. Remember what you're putting out there. Okay, 
big pose. From here, bring your feet in front of your seat again. Push into your arms. Lift your back up off the ground. Stay and incline plane. So no back bend here. Just to straight line from the shoulders to the knees. And then you can take a hand on top of your thighs. Right when your legs join onto your body. And then start to roll down. Starting at the top of the back. Roll down slowly. As you see, come close to the ground. Push into your tops of your legs. Try to bring your seat right against your heels. So the back is flat on the ground. Now from here, roll back up. Seal position. Cross your ankle. Come on to your belly. Grab the Shalandasana with your arms beside your body. The palms facing up. Inhale, lift your chest. Fingertips, push your shoulders back. Then lift your arms up. Imagine your superhero flying. And now bend your legs, push up the heels, bring arms up to the side of your side body. Arch your back, bring your thighs up higher. Release forehead and hands, breathe in. Breathe out. Hands over your shoulders, roll the shoulders back, and start to take your head up. Curve your spine. Your chest comes forward, away from the seat. Take your head back more and more. You can stay, maybe cold with your arms bent, more flexible. Keep going. Try to get your head over your, the back head over your seat. Walk your hands closer if you like. Get up higher. More flexible still, come onto your fingertips. They should be close to your hips. So the whole top of the body from your legs, top leg up is up off the ground. Open up your legs, bend your knees, see if you get your toes to the head. Inhale, breath. Even if you think don't touch the head, keep imagining, keep working, imagine you squeeze yourself to one of your knees. See yourself in the pose. At some point, maybe the body will obey. No attachment to results, just do what feels well for you, just do your best. And back. Hands down on your forehead, down on the hands. Poses will not get you to self realization, but the intention behind the pose so you just merge with God. That is what brings you closer to self realization, not being able to do the fancy poses where you can find stillness in your pose and the ability to see yourself in the form, that is what you're trying, that is what's most important. Now from here, lift back up. In the seat position, you can do a twist now with all the Matsyandrasana with your left leg folded under, your right foot on the outside of your left knee. If you can't get both hips to come down, Flat, bring your left leg forward and move your right foot forward beyond the knee. Right hand behind the back, center the back, left arm up, and press the left arm against the outside of the right thigh. Inhale, push your lower back up and in. Turn to the right. Try to get your chin over your back shoulder. Your shoulders in line with the rest of your body, your foot, and your knee. Flush with the edge of the mat as well. Try to move it more and more with each exhale without dropping the body into your hips. Flip the pose and then do the other side. So again, you can fold the right leg under this time, the left foot goes behind uh, on the outside of the right knee. Up, left arm behind the back. Lift through the chest on the inhale, push the lower back up and in, and then keep on pulling the knee beyond the right edge of the body as you turn more and more. If you visualize your spine spiraling up as you imagine your skin is transparent, you might be able to go a little bit deeper into your meditation. Use your imagination. Oh. 
toes, rest on your back. Open up your legs and allow yourself to rest. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, move all fatigue. Feel everything just becoming heavy. Everything sinking down. The muscles feel so dissolved. Everything softens. And here we're continuing to offer, even in Shavasana, imagine that the best of the best is coming to you now. The fruits of the practice that we've renounced, they come anyways as a result of you offering up your practice, especially as a result of offering up your practice. So accept them with gratitude. Direct them all to the spiritual heart where God resides. And as God is equally present in all beings, everything that you offer up to God goes up to all beings as well. Training your mind to be in the in the mindset of the wit of the servant serving all beings. It will become an executive nature, which is continue to do it even beyond the mat as well. And that's what we're trying to do. Share everything that you have, share everything that you are, share everything that you do, and ensure though that it is coming from a place of compassion and love. Without yama and niyama, the, F, the observance, the ethical rules and observances, there is no success in yoga. There is no quietness in the mind for meditation. There's no path to self-realization. It must be present all the time. Sit in acknowledgement of your mission to continue to radiate your light and love, your light and love to all beings. Come back to seat position in a way that allows you to stay in this state of tranquility, always softly, mindfully, and quietly. And we'll close the practice with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Sit tall, instill the peace within, send of all beings everywhere. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Be receptive to the grace of God. All is within. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. You need to do more Shavasana now, then go ahead and do some more to allow more benefits, give more opportunity for benefits to integrate. Have a nice day. Namaste. See you soon. Thank you.